everyone, welcome back to my in-depth series on how to play Warhammer 40k 7th edition. As always, my name is Jay. In this episode, we're going to be covering weapon profiles. You see, the shooting phase of Warhammer 40k 7th edition is by far the most complicated phase of the game. Because everyone shoots at different ballistic skills, and therefore hits on a different number. Uh, you have to compare the strength of the gun versus the toughness of the individual, so various things wound on various numbers. There's cover saves, vulnerable saves, armor saves, etc. So I'm going to be breaking it up into a few parts to go over each part in extreme detail. That way you can actually learn from these videos. In this one we're going to talk about weapons. The weapons themselves that you'll be shooting in the shooting phase. Because if you don't know how they work, it's pretty hard to use them in the shooting phase. So today we'll be going over the weapon profile, the types of shooting weapons, and some of the special rules that typically apply to weapons in Warhammer 40k 7th edition. So, yeah, let's get started. So if you look up any gun in the Warhammer 40k rulebook or in the codex, it has a weapon profile. And in it you're going to find several things, including the range, the strength of the weapon, the AP or armor penetration of the value of the weapon, and the rules, the type and special rules of that weapon. So essentially we're going to go through each part of this in some detail and discuss this. So the first part is the range. So essentially the range of the gun is how far you can shoot the gun in a turn for Warhammer 40k 7th edition. Remember, you can only target individuals, units, or vehicles that are in range of your gun. That being said, some shots have the ability to scatter, and we'll be discussing those in a future video. They use templates and they can potentially scatter and hurt things outside of their range. But most guns in Warhammer 40k 7th edition can only shoot at units, individuals, or tanks, or vehicles, whatever, uh, within the range of the weapon. A typical range is about 24 inches for most guns, but some can go the whole table edge, 10 feet. Some can do 7 feet. Some are only 12 inches, 1 foot in range. Some can even do 6 inches. So it depends on the gun, and, uh, and that's basically it. The longer the range, typically the better for the gun, because that means you can shoot more things and get in range of more things. Another question that comes up frequently in Warhammer 40k is, at what point do you measure from? Now, for most models in the game, so most infantry, uh, for walkers, for almost everything in the game other than vehicles, you typically measure from the front of the base of the model or the direction of the base towards the individual. So if any part of the target's base is within range of a part of your base, for that gun, you can shoot that individual. For tanks, such as this Land Raider, the range is actually measured from the gun itself, since tanks and, and many vehicles have uh, guns that are very differently placed along the tank. So in this case, it act, it's actually from the gun itself to the target model. Um, but it, for most infantry and most other models in the game, it's typically from the base of the infantry model to the base of the target. So for example, this Space Marine has a bolter, and bolters have a 24 inch maximum range. So we measure the range from the Space Marine to his target, this Orc Boy, and we see if they're in range. Now if any part of the base is within range of the, of the bolter uh, Space Marine, he can shoot that orc boy. If he's out of range, so farther than 24 inches, he cannot shoot the orc boy. And that's essentially how you measure range. So that's range in a nutshell. Obviously, it measures the distance that they can possibly shoot at. They don't have to necessarily shoot the, uh, the maximum range. There are some special rules that say a minimum range as well, but that only applies to usually ordnance weapons that shoot giant blasts upon the battlefield. So typically, you can shoot if your range is 36 inches, you can shoot any model within one inch to all the way up to 36 inches. The next important factor in a weapon profile is the strength of the weapon. So essentially, what do you use the strength of the weapon for? The strength of the weapon is used to determine how to wound your opponent, or it's used to wound your opponent after hitting them using the ballistics of the individual, which I'll be covering in a future video. So essentially, you compare the strength to the toughness of the individual being shot at, uh, to find out what it takes to roll to wound the individual. So in this case, the higher the strength, the better for the weapon. A typical strength is about four in the game, so it typically wounds individuals that are toughness four on fours, but we'll be going into that in a future video. So, but some guns can go all the way to strength 10. In fact, some armies have access to a lot of guns that are strength eight and above, so they're pretty scary. 
So in this case, the strength, the higher the better, maximum is 10. And this value will be used in, and I'll be showing you how to do it in a future video, of this value is going to be used to, to figure out what you need to wound uh, an individual or to destroy a vehicle or a building uh, in the shooting phase. Higher the better. The next important stat in a weapon profile is the armor penetration or the AP value. Now this is the opposite of the strength. You want this value to be as low as possible and I'll describe why. Basically this value is used to determine if it goes through the armor save of the unit being shot at. And what you typically do is you compare the AP value to the armor save of the individual or squad being shot. If the AP value is equal to or less than the armor save, that person's armor save is negated and they don't get an armor save as a result of being shot by this weapon. So it goes through their armor save and it typically ends up with a dead target. They might rely on what's called an invulnerable save or a cover save, both of which will be covered in the next video, but uh, they do not get an armor save against this shot. So once again, in this case, you want the lowest value possible. So it ranges from one to six, and there's also a dash. Um, dash means it doesn't go through any armor save. A six, meaning it would go through anybody whose armor save is six plus. So anybody who uses a very weak armor, like this orc boy, for example, he has a six up armor. So anything with an AP value of six or better, so six, five, four, three, two, or one, will go through his armor. So they're pretty easy to kill. However, this Space Marine here, once again, is a three up armor save. So only weapons with an AP value of three, two, or one, as I said, equal to or less than, will go through his armor save and result in probably a dead Space Marine. So once again, AP values, the lower the better, plus AP2 and AP1 guns actually get bonuses when shooting at vehicles and shooting at buildings. They destroy them easier, and uh, it's, it's very advantageous to shoot at vehicles and buildings with AP-1 or AP-2 guns. And that's essentially armor penetration, or AP, in a nutshell. The final part of the stat line is the type. Now there are many types of guns in Warhammer 40k 7th edition, so now I'm going to go over them in good detail, and then I'll go over some of the special rules which typically apply to some of these guns in, uh, in Warhammer 40k 7th edition. So the most common type of gun in Warhammer 40k 7th edition arguably is the assault gun. So what a gun means is this type assault means they can move in the movement phase, fire as normal, and still be able to assault the target in which the model shot at in the assault phase. You don't have to assault the individual, but the unit that you shot at. Uh, you, still, you can only fire at the same target you want to assault, and, uh, but if you have an assault weapon, you can still assault them after shooting them. So it's quite advantageous, these guns, because you can shoot them and then assault them in the assault phase, killing even more. And that's basically assault weapons. The next really common one is called rapid fire. Now, most space marines, for example, use bolters, such as what I've been describing throughout this video. Bolters are what's called as rapid fire weapons. And with rapid fire weapons, you can move as normal in the movement phase, and you can shoot in the shooting phase, but you cannot assault anything if you've shot a rapid fire weapon in the shooting phase. So this gun does matter when you're trying to figure out what you want to shoot and what you want to assault. Also, rapid fire weapons have a cool rule. They can shoot one shot up to their maximum range. So in this case, the bolter has a range of 24 inches. It can fire one bullet per gun at 24 inch range, or it can fire two shots at half range. So if your target is closer to you than, uh, than half the range, so in this case, 12 inches, you get to fire two shots at the squad or the unit instead of one. But as I said, after firing, at the squad, you cannot assault them during the assault phase. Furthermore, if a squad is at mixed distances, for example, in this case, where some of the squad members are within 12 inches of the target, but some of them are outside of 12 inches, you basically just treat them as, you sum up as the individuals. So the individuals within 12 inches can fire two shots, and the individuals firing at more than 12 inches can fire one shot, you add up all the shots, roll them together, and I'll be describing how to do so in the following video. 
And that's essentially rapid fire weapons. You either two shots at half range or one shot at full range and you cannot assault afterwards. The next type of weapon is called heavy. Heavy weapons, as the name suggests, it's a heavy weapon. It's heavy, hard to carry, and it fires usually a high strength or very good AP shot, it does some damage, and destroys things as you want it. These are the heavy hitters, typically in the heavy support choices of your codex, as I've gone through in a previous video. For example, this orc Luda has what's called a death gun. And death guns are heavy D3, which I'll be talking about D3 after. D3 meaning it just gets D3 shots a, a, a turn instead of a normal amount of shots. So heavy guns have different rules as well as the other ones. First of all, it's not good to move with heavy weapons unless you have a special rule called Relentless, which ignores what I'm about to mention. But unless you have Relentless, basically, if you move during the movement phase, it really hurts your shooting in the shooting phase. And when you roll your dice to hit, only a six will result in a hit if you've moved during the movement phase. So essentially for heavy weapons, moving them is a huge penalty to your shooting ability. So it's always good to keep these guys stationary unless they have a special rule called Relentless. For example, this Dark Angel Terminator has Relentless. So the missile launcher on his back, he can move and fire as normal without any penalty. But this Luda does not have Relentless, so if he moves, it will penalize his shooting abilities during the shooting phase. Furthermore, if the gun that's a heavy choice uh, shoots blasts, which I will be covering in a future video, it can't do so if it moved in the movement phase. It cannot fire as normal, so it gets penalized even further. So if you have guns that shoot blast templates, don't move them in the movement phase. Plus, if you shoot a heavy weapon in the, move, in the shooting phase, you cannot assault once again in the assault phase. You are limited to standing where you were because you shot your heavy weapon at your opponent. If you have Relentless, it ignores all these rules and you can assault as normal. A very common type as well in 40k for shooting weapons is called Pistol. And a pistol, as the name suggests, is a small, one single-handed small gun that you just fire. It's typically very short range, usually 12 inches. And what it does is, not only can you shoot it as normal in the shooting phase, even if you moved, and you can assault in the assault phase even after shooting a pistol at your opponent, but also can give you a bonus in close combat, which I will be discussing in the assault phase version, uh, in the assault phase video of this series. So it's a really cool thing to use, but it's typically very short range, and in a lot of cases, it's lower strength and not very good AP. The next type of weapons I'll briefly discuss are template weapons. They are including flamers, which use a flamer template, or blast weapons, and I will be dedicating an entire video solely to these because these guns tend to follow very different rules from the rest of the guns in Warmer 40k, 7th edition. The final type of weapon that I'll be going over in this video is called a salvo weapon, and salvo weapons are quite different from all the other weapons in Warmer 40k, 7th edition. First of all, they have a range as well, and they have a strength and an AP value, but there's two different numbers, two different profiles in their, in their rules column. Usually it's like 2 3, 2 4, 3 6. And what it basically means is for salvo weapons, once again, this, uh, is, this rule is ignored if you have the rule relentless. Typically, if you stand still in the movement phase, you can fire the gun at its full range and at the larger number of shots in the profile. However, if you move during the movement phase, this will penalize you in the shooting phase. So, first of all, the range is halved. So if you move in the movement phase, you can only fire at half range in the shooting phase, and you get the smaller number in the profile. For example, this Ray Knight is holding a Psy Cannon. Psy Cannons are 24 inch range, strength 7, AP 4, salvo 2, 4. And that means that if the Ray Knight stands still, he can fire his gun to a maximum 24 inch range in the shooting phase, and gets four shots, but if he moves through the movement phase, he can only fire up to 12 inches and only gets two shots. So for salvo weapons, there's a huge penalty for moving in the movement phase. You only should move under specific, uh, so you should only move if you really have to. Another important factor with all these weapons is the fact that movement is determined on an individual basis in the shooting phase. So for example, if we have five Grey Knights, like right here, 
And the ones without the salvo weapons move, that does not penalize the carrier of the salvo weapon. He has to move, that specific individual has to move, in order to be penalized in the shooting phase. If all the other members of his squad move and he doesn't, he can still fire as normal. And this also applies with the heavy weapons and, uh, and anything that penalizes you for moving in the movement phase. Furthermore, like all the other weapons, if you fire a salvo weapon in the shooting phase, you cannot assault in the assault phase. It's just the rules. Cooler guns can't basically prevent you from assaulting in the assault phase. So now that we've gone, gone over the types of guns typically used in Warmer 40k 7th edition, let's go over some of the special rules with, which might apply to these weapons. And uh, I'll just briefly go over a few that really do come up frequently in, um, in these guns. The first one, Gets Hot. Gets Hot is typically a special rule that applies to plasma weapons. And what it basically means is when you roll to hit with a Gets Hot weapon, if you roll a 1, not only do you fail to hit whatever you're shooting at, it gets hot. The weapon burns a hole through the hands of whoever's shooting it. And then basically causes a wound. Now, but you do get a normal armor save if you have one. And if you don't have an armor save, if you have an invul, you get an invulnerable save. And if you pass that, whoever shoots the weapon survives. But if, he, if you fail it, they die. So this Dark Angel Space Marine holding a plasma gun, if he rolls a one to hit, like here, it causes a wound to him. So you have to roll his armor save on a 3-up, because that's his armor save, 3-up armor. He survives. On a 1 and 2, he dies. So you could actually end up killing your own guy in your shooting phase with Gets Hot weapons. But as I said, it's only typically limited to most plasma guns, and most other guns kind of uh, don't have the Gets Hot special rule. Another frequent rule that comes up in, these, in most weapon profiles is ignores cover. Some types of guns ignore cover. What ignores cover basically means is if a gun ignores cover, it removes the ability for the, the target unit to take a cover save. As I will discuss in the next video, there are three types of saves an individual can take. First one's armor, second one's invulnerable, and third one is cover. And uh, with ignores cover guns, they don't have the ability to take a cover save, and so they have to rely on their armor save or their invulnerable save instead. Another frequently used special rule is called rending. And what rending essentially does is, rending on a 6 to wound the individual, if you roll a 6 on the to wound roll, uh, it causes a wound that is AP2. So essentially it goes through basically anyone's armor save, because the best armor save in the game is 2 up. So on a 6 to wound, uh, it goes through their armor save, and hopefully the individual being shot at has a vulnerable save, or cover save, because otherwise the individual will die. Another one that might come up if you're playing armies like Dark Eldar is one called Poisoned. And in brackets will be 4 up, 4 plus, 3 plus, 2 plus, 5 plus, a number plus. And what this means is on the to wound roll, and once again, I'm covering to wound rolls in the next video, um, instead of a normal comparing the strength of the weapon to the, uh, to the individual, uh, to the individual's toughness, it is just a normal dice roll, and on a certain number it, it wounds, on a certain number it doesn't wound. So poisoned 4-up shooting means that on a to wound roll of 4, regardless of the individual's toughness that's being shot at, it causes a wound. Another type of gun that actually many armies have access to are sniper weapons. Sniper weapons are, are typically very long range guns, and that they typically have a strength as an X. So they don't actually have get a strength value, they just get an X. And they sometimes have an AP, and their type is called Sniper. Now, Sniper weapons act slightly different from the other ones. Basically, if you're shooting at an individual, regardless of the individual's toughness, um, it wounds basically on a 4-up. On a 4-plus on the dice, on the to-wound rule, it wounds the target. And usually on a 6, it has that rending special rule, and, uh, and it goes through the armor save of the individual being shot at. That's snipers. They're typically on the guys who have sniper rifles, like the rangers or the scouts. Uh, they're usually guys that hide in cover and shoot their guns from a distance. And that's it. So essentially that is the weapon profile in a nutshell. Uh, obviously there's a lot of other special rules out there and I'll be covering most of them in future videos. Uh, but that's essentially it. So every weapon has a weapon profile. There's the range. So you measure from the individual to the individual shooting. If they're in range of the gun, they can be shot. At. And that's basically if they're out of range, they cannot be, sh be shot. There's the strength of the gun. 
which is used to compare to the toughness of the target to see what you need to wound the individual that you're shooting at. There's the AP value. The lower the better. Uh, if the AP value is equal to or less than the armor save of the individual being shot at, it ignores the armor save and uh, it increases the chances of killing the target unit. And finally, there is the type of weapons, which could include a heavy, rapid fire, assault, pistol, sniper, and, uh, and also special rules that apply to the weapons. So all these must be taken into consideration during the movement phase, the shooting phase, and the assault phase, because every gun acts differently in each one of these phases. And for most of them, moving in the movement phase prevents you from shooting your target in the, sh in the shooting phase. And if you shoot any of these weapons in the shooting phase, you can't assault them in the assault phase unless you have an assault weapon or a pistol weapon. So I really hope you enjoyed this episode of How to Play Warm 40K 7th Edition, and I hope you learned a bit. Stay tuned for the next one where I'll be going over the shooting phase in extreme detail. Now that we know how weapons work, I'm going to talk about declaring targets, rolling to hit, rolling to wound, and then the armor saves, cover saves, or vulnerable saves that can be taken afterwards if you wound them. So stay tuned for the next video. Leave a comment in the comment section down below if you felt I missed anything or you want to add to the conversation. And subscribe to my channel if you already haven't done so. Really does help a lot. So stay tuned for the next one. Until next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting everyone.